I am Hollywood mogul and comic book legend, Stan Lee. You may know me from the dozens of comic book heroes I've created. The Fantastic Four, X-Men, Thor, Hulk, Iron Man, Spider-Man, each of whom are household names and stars of their own blockbusters. In fact, Marvel Entertainment has become such a massive movie conglomerate, it has made $18 billion just since 2008. In fact, heck, you can't even talk about movies nowadays without talking about Marvel. Our last movie, Avengers Endgame, is the largest moneymaker in Hollywood history. Now, to know how this all came together, we have to go back 50 years ago to our management offices on Madison Avenue. The man sitting there is named Martin Goodman. He is the publisher of Marvel Comics and the owner of the Goodman Magazine Management Company. He was, uh, how do I put this, uh, the man who made sure all the checks got signed. He was a bean counter, a paper pusher. But he was a genius at organization and marketing. He was also very good at handling hot-headed personalities. And I must admit, I was one back in the day. That's me. That's the young Stan, or at least the younger version of the virile and vigorous champion you see before you. <laughs> and I was hot-headed, I must admit, but Martin was there to put out the fires I was certain to start. Stop it. Stop messing with that. Messing with what? I'm only looking at the numbers. You don't understand numbers. <laughs> I am the numbers. All our top sellers came straight out of my brain. My titles are selling like hotcakes and the hits just keep coming, baby. They just keep coming. I'm the idea's engine that is driving this locomotive. You're all talk, kid. Talk, talk, talk. Everything with you is words. You need an illustrator. And Jack Kirby is the best in the business. He's the guy bringing your ideas to life. Kirby, that guy's a hack. All he does is draw. Anyone can draw. Hey, I've got a six-year-old nephew back home, and all he does is doodle all day. Let's give him a windowed office and call him an illustrator. Ah, oh, Jack, there you are. Come on in. Have a seat. Have a seat. Jack Kirby, our main illustrator and my main competitor. We were, uh, kids have a term for it now, these frenemies. You know, <laughs> friends who are also enemies. We battled like gladiators, but underneath it all was a fundamental respect. Hello, Stan. You know talent son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Had any amazing ideas for Cape Crusaders? Radioactive man, molten man. <laughs> wait, wait. Here's an amazing idea. Asbestos man. I'll have you know I've already written Asbestos man with his flame-resistant armor and shield, and he defeated the Human Torch in Strange Tales 111. Wow, that's amazing. I see why they call you Stan the Man. All right, all right. Knock it off. Knock it off. Now, let's get this little meeting started. Now, look, fellas. You work together to make this company a lot of money. A whole lot of money. I mean, virtually every successful comic that we have right now has come across your desk. I'm telling you, Martin, I can't work with this guy. Jolly Jack over there is all mouth and no trousers. All right, all right. Both of you, simmer down. 
Simmer down and have a seat, please. Now, we're going to go over everything in an orderly manner. Now, as I was saying before, overall, business is good. The Fantastic Four is doing gangbusters. Thor and Hulk continue to do well in mail order and newsstands. But we have got to keep coming up with new titles, gentlemen. And that means, well, what does that mean, fellas? Learning to work together. That's right. Learning to work together. <laughs> now, I understand there's been some tension between you two when it comes to this new guy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Ant-Man. Exactly. Hank Pym, a.k.a. Ant-Man. Able to shrink down to the size of an ant. Malarkey! <laughs> able to shrink down to the size of an ant. All right, all right. Jack, what do you think he ought to be? Ant-Man. <laughs> King of the ants. You see what I mean? Able to command ants. Able to make them do his bidding. Flying ants, fire ants, army ants and fatigues, carpenter ants, and tiny little hard hats. Tiny little hard hats. Tiny little hard hats. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What kind of superpower is that? Ant-Man, king of the ants. What's the, what's the big deal? And who's his nemesis? Huh? Pesticide man? Bigfoot guy? Kid with giant magnifying glass. Well, how is shrinking down to itsy bitsy size supposed to make you a crime fighter? Who ever heard of a pipsqueak superhero? Oh no, don't make me angry, or I'll use my magic insect powers to make myself this small! It's called the Pim Particle! <laughs> you and your stupid alliterative naming All right, all right, boys. That's enough. That is enough. Now, is there any reason why they can't do both? What do you mean? I mean, he can shrink down in size, and he's king of the ants. I... I suppose Hank Pym could create some sort of EMP communication device. Now, there. <laughs> now you see, that's the spirit. All right, moving on. Uh, how's it going with this uh, new character you've been working on? And uh, what's his name? Spider Boy? Spider Man. <laughs> sorry, Spider Man. Alright, uh, and I'm sorry, uh, Martin, but Jack is refusing to work with me. What are you talking about? I gave you everything you asked, and then some. <laughs> In my vision, a high school aged boy named Peter Parker. There you go with the alliteration again. Peter Parker picked a peck of pickle. Peter Parker gets bitten by a radioactive spider and develops the, the spider's mysterious powers. All right. Now, I can see where that would work. Jack, what's your problem? Peter Parker, he has all the powers of a spider, right? Right. Uh, he's super strong, and he can leap through the air. Sure. He can climb walls. Well, sounds good. No problem so far. Let's see, he's, uh, he's got the spider psychic powers. And he's got the spiders. <laughs> Wait, um. <clears throat> what did you say? Psychic powers. Spider sense. Oh, <laughs> it's called his spider sense. It's called his spider sense. It's, it's, okay, Martin. It's all fine. I actually have no issue. All right then, you etch a sketch imbecile. What do you have a problem with? <laughs> Peter Parker, the Spider-Man guy, he can shoot webs. Of course, he can shoot webs. He has the powers of a spider. Well, now, 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 Jack, I'm not sure I see what you're getting at. All I'm saying is we have a high school-aged boy. Yeah. And he's sort of. Ejaculating white fluid all over the place. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, oh, 
web capsules. We'll we'll go with chemical web capsules. Fine. Fine. Woo! Christ is averted. Okay, now, uh, so what do we what do we have on the agenda next? Oh, Sorcerer Supreme! Uh, New York surgeon until he smashed up his hands, and then he moved to Tibet to study the ancient art of transcendentalism. I call him Dr. Strange. <laughs> Yeah, Stan's doing it. I will have you know. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> I think we'll table that for now. So, uh, how's it all coming with this uh, team up project I asked you guys to come <laughs> up with? Now look, I gotta tell you, DC is kicking our butts with this Justice League thing. <sighs> we come up with a group of, a, a super group of our own. So, what do you have? Look, uh, Martin, we tried to figure out some way for all these heroes to work together, but why would Iron Man work with the Hulk? One's all brain and the other's all brawn. <laughs> exactly, and why would Captain America ever work with Thor? One's a hard-working national hero, and the other's some Scandinavian pretty boy. Similarly, why would Ant-Man, king of the ants, able to shrink down to the size of an ant, Jim Tommy? What we're trying to say is, Martin, with all of these heroes and all of their different backstories, why would any of them have any reason to work together? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they have some common enemy. Like, oh, I don't know, for instance, unemployment. I'm sure that we can find a reason for them to work together. Uh, um, I have a thought. What, what if Loki is up to his old tricks and he's trying to get his brother Thor in trouble? Hey, didn't you invent some teenage kid that's friends with the Hulk? Rick, 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 something. Oh, Rick Jones! Uh, gotcha! Rick Jones. What if Rick Jones intercepts the transmission? And when he can't get in touch with the Fantastic Four, he contacts the Hulk. Who knows Iron Man from? From the Incredible Hulk number 131. <clears throat> uh, what? You're not the only one that likes comic books. Oh, all righty then. I think that's enough for now. Look, before you go and get back to work, I want to see a spec script and storyboards by Tuesday. Will do, boss. We'll get right on it. Uh, hey, hey. Do you have a name selected for this super group? Of course, we have a name, Martin. Uh, Stan here. He came up with the perfect name. Go on, Stan. Tell me what you came up with. I do. I, I, have, the, I have the perfect name. Uh, I call them The Avengers. <laughs> the Avengers! I like it. Jack, work me up a cover and get back to me ASAP. Yes, sir. <laughs> the Avengers! Jeez Louise, what kind of a name is that? The Avengers. What are they supposed to be avenging? I don't know. You, you put me on the spot. It was one of the only two names I was kicking around. It was either that or the X-Men. The <laughs> X-Men? Well, that name's lousy. The Avengers it is. <laughs> so, that's how we came up with the concept of the Avengers, the biggest movie in Hollywood history. By the seat of our pants and the sweat of our brow. This is before all these computer whiz bangs and theme park merchandising. Martin Goodman sold his shares in Marvel in 1967, moved to Palm Beach. Jack Kirby moved from Marvel to DC, back to Marvel again, and ended up in the comic book Hall of Fame. As for me, well, I became a 
a certified movie star legend all over the world, beloved by hundreds of millions of people. Excelsior.